So in the previous videos, we managed to find this recursion formula. So what this does is that we call that for all h of y. It's given by this infinite series over here. So using this formula, we can use this recursion formula to re deduce what these constants a's it should be. So this infinite series goes on and on. And then using this formula, we can deduce what these constants should be. So we start with that a0. And then using this recursion formula, we can substitute this in and get a2. And then we can substitute a2 back in and then get a4. And then substitute a4 to here and then we can get a6 and so on. So you can see you can use this method to generate all the constants. And you can see that this sequence over here only covers the a's with a subscript that is even. So we also need to specify an a1 and then use this recursion formula to generate a3, a5, a7 and so on. So it seems like we're done here. So we can just maybe set a initial condition and then use that to deduce what a0 and a1 should be. And then using this recursion formula, we can deduce what the rest of the constant should be. So it seems like we have already solved the Schrodinger equation. So it seems like we're already done. But then again, there's actually a problem because if using this definition of a, a, j, so using this relationship, we can actually prove that h of y, which in this case, it's equal to the sum of this subscript should be a j. So the sum of a j times y to the power of j. This could actually be approximated by this formula over here. So it could be the sum of some constant divided by j factorial times y to the power of 2j. And then if you observe this term over here, it actually resembles a lot like the Taylor series expansion of e to the power of x. So the Taylor series expansion of e to the power of x is equal to x to the power of j divided by j factorial. And then you can see that if you would just substitute in the terms, in this case, x is given by y squared. So this function here is going to be equal to c times e to the power of y squared, where c is just some constant. So what this means is that as the values of j gets larger, this approximate formula is going to be more and more valid. And as it does so, it is going to behave in a way that is pretty similar to c times e to the power of uh, e c times e to the power of y squared because of this relationship over here. So what this means is that as uh, j tends larger and larger as this infinite series goes on, h of y is going to stop behaving more and more like c times e to the power of y squared. And this function here is not normalizable. So what this means is h of y is not going to be normalizable. So this is going to be a problem. Our solutions have to be normalizable. And so uh, it's not normalizable because as you can observe this function over here. As y tends towards large numbers, this value is going to go crazy. So it's pretty much impossible to fix this down to 1. So in order to get around this problem, we're going to have to specify a special condition. So let me just get rid of this stuff over here. So it seems like in order to arrive at a normalizable solution, this recursion formula has to stop at some point, which means 2j plus 1 minus k must be equal to 0 at some point. So what exactly does this mean? So I can illustrate uh, what this means by using an example. So let me just get rid of all this stuff over here. So let's just say I have, uh, I start with a0 and I'm able to deduce a2 and then using this recursion formula I deduce a4 and let's say I want to deduce a6 and then in this case let's say k is going to be equal to 9. So let's just say we have a situation where k is equal to 9 and then if we try to derive a6 we just substitute a4 over here and then we need to, since in this case j is equal to 4, we just substitute 2 times 4 plus 1, which is equal to 9, and minus k. So we minus 9. So this is going to be 0 times a4. And so a6 is actually going to be equal to 0. And then you can see that because of this, all the subsequent terms are also going to be equal to 0. So a8 is also going to be equal to 0, because if you substitute this in, you just get 0 times something, which is going to be equal to 0. So you see that by the same logic, the rest of the terms, they're all equal to 0. So you can see that what we've essentially done is that we've chopped off the constants over here. So we have a0, a2, a4, but then starting from a6, everything becomes 0, so it gets chopped off. So this series here gets chopped off, and you have no further terms. And this approximation formula only works if j reaches large uh, numbers. So it's only when j reaches large number numbers that h of y start behaving like e to the power of y squared. So if we chop these uh, uh, larger constants off, then this uh, behavior will not happen and then our solution will be normalizable and then you can see that uh, what we've done here we've only considered the uh, the even uh, subscripts so in this case 
you can notice that what we're trying to do is essentially to chop off the rest of the terms. And in order to do that also for the odd terms, the only way is to set a1 to be equal to 0. And if a1 is equal to 0, a3 is going to be equal to 0, and so on. So a5, a7, they're all going to be equal to 0. If I don't set a1 to be equal to 0, this recursion formula is just going to keep going on and on because for k equal to 9, this, this term will never be 0. So it will just keep generating these constants all the way to infinity and then this kind of behavior will happen again and then the solution will not be normalizable. So this is what I mean when I say in order to make our solution normalizable, we need to set 2j plus 1 minus k equal to 0 uh, so that our recursion formula will stop at some point. So this is an example of what exactly I mean by this. So using this fact over here, we can actually deduce a pretty important result. So let's just get rid of this. So it seems like we have a choice. So we need to choose a j such that this recursion formula will stop. So just now we did k equal to 9. And for that case, our recursion formula stopped at j equal to 4. So we went to a4, and then for a6, we got nothing. We got 0, and so on. So for a8, a10, and so on, we will get 0. So in the example that I just showed you, that was the case where j was, where we chose j equal to 4 uh, such that this relationship will be true. And of course, we have many different choices. You don't have to choose j equal to 4 for the recursion formula to stop. You can actually choose j equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. So all the natural numbers, they're all, they they all valid options. So either one of these choices will allow your solution to be normalizable in the end. So the, each of these choices will correspond. So each of these choices will help you generate a new set of constants. And each of these new sets of constants will correspond to a different solution, which will be normalizable and hence will be valid. And using this fact over here, we can actually deduce an interesting property of about the constant k over here. Because if you recall from the earlier videos, k is actually just an abbreviation for 2e divided by h bar omega. So if we do a bit of, do a bit of uh, rearranging, if I just dump everything over to the other side, I get 2j plus 1. And then I just dump the constants over to the other side, I get h bar omega j plus one half. And then you can see that by no coincidence this is exactly the energy levels that you uh, that you get for the harmonic oscillator. And this is the same exact result we got using the uh, algebraic method before. So what this means is that for each choice, so I can choose j to be equal to 0, 1, 2. If I, so if I choose 2, the recursion formula will stop at j equal to 2. And that will give me a set of constants which would give me my h of y, and then for that h of y, I will be able to deduce what xi of y should be, which would be our solution. And then for each of these different choices, we get a different set of constants, which would give us a different h of y, which would give us a different solution. And then you can see that for each different choice, this would actually correspond to this energy level. So if I say I choose j equal to 3, I get a whole bunch of constants, I get h of y, and so which allows me to deduce what xi of y should be. And then this xi of y is going to be the solution that corresponds to the energy state where j is equal to 3. So this is how this whole mechanism works.